All right, welcome back to Happy Hour with Heather and Guest. This is episode 94. As always, I'm joined by Heather. Hello. And uh, I'm that other dude, Andrew. And today, the ball was in my court, so I suggested we listen to a band called High Warden from Munster, Germany. And then we also uh, got a submission from Amsterdam in the Netherlands from a group called Labashida. So, um, yeah, that's what we're going to talk about. Do you have a preference of who we begin with? No. Okay. Well, why don't we start with Labashida? Okay. As the appetizer and we'll save High Warden for the entree. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, Labashita. And for those of you out there, if you would like Heather and I to discuss your music, um, feel free to reach out to us. We are more than happy to uh, to do that. Sometimes bands will reach out to us like Labashita did. Uh, their latest release is called Cat Cast Fat Shadows. But cast fat is one word as opposed to it being cast fat shadows um yeah i i didn't know where that was going uh <laughs> anyway labashita are an art punk and noise rock band from amsterdam based around singer guitarist violin player saskia Vandergeisen, i believe that's how you pronounce it if, if it's wrong then i apologize and guitarist arn wolfswinkle Again, if I'm getting any of these names wrong, I apologize. But I dug how uh, she's credited as a singer, guitarist, and violin player. Um, so what were your thoughts about... Oh, uh, one last thing. I looked up Labashita is a town in Ireland. So I don't know if that's where they got the name from. I was trying to think, because that was the only hit that I got when I did my very meticulous research. <laughs> so. Yeah, I um, I think it's really fun when bands send us their music. I, I really enjoy it a lot. And like you said, this came from Amsterdam. I hadn't, hadn't heard of them before and had no idea what to expect. And that's where, for me, that's where the real fun is. Because mm -hmm. just not, just, you know, not, not having any preconceived notions and just going in, you know, with a completely open mind, not knowing what to expect. And to me, that's where the real fun is. This music is, <clears throat> it's so interesting and it's very different from anything that I'm used to listening to. It's a definite form I thought it was a definite form of artistic expression. It's kind of punk and experimental. I took a look at the instruments used and there's guitar, violin, viola, piano, synthesizer. There's also guest musicians with cello, double bass, and more violin and more piano. One instrument that was mentioned was marimba. <clears throat> I wasn't really exactly sure what that was, so I, I looked it up and it it seems like it's similar to a xylophone, but it's got um, wooden tone plates that you strike. And then there's uh, resonator pipes that are underneath, and that's what amplifies the sound. And so I just found this I just found this all to be very interesting and very unique. Yeah, it was interesting because when I listened to it, I also was in a similar position where I didn't know what to expect. Um, I looked up that they were an art punk and noise rock band, so I thought I had an idea. But then, uh, and not every song includes all of these instruments. Some of them are, are pretty straightforward but they do include a, a wide variety. Um, I spent a really long time trying to remember who the singer reminded me of in terms of her, the sound of her voice. And I think I got, I think it's Kim Gordon from Sonic Youth. Uh, in fact, I, I 
found a lot of similarities between Labashita and Sonic Youth, um, sort of on that experimental punk rock kind of uh, blend, um, noise rock, art rock, whatever label you feel fits. Um, but yeah, it's really good music. Um, if you're into Sonic Youth or early bre- like pod era breeders, um, I would say definitely check out Labashita. I mean, you should check them out anyway to just uh, give them a listen because it is good music. But specifically, if you're into, um, you know, punk, art rock, noise rock, all that that sort of stuff, then this is right up your street, as an ex-girlfriend's uh, grandmother used to say, because she was British. She would say, this is right up your street. <laughs> Instead of alley, right up your yeah, alley. Yeah, right up your alley, yes. It's this right up right your street. Your street. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely check out Labashita. I'm really grateful that they sent us their album to discuss. And uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Um, And then we can skip on over to Munster, Germany, which is right near uh, a neighboring country. And uh, we can talk about High Warden. High Warden. (laughs) Yeah, this is their debut. Their debut album, Land of Stone. Um, They released it at the end of 2022. They call their music slow, heavy metal. I I saw it classified as epic doom, and I feel it's definitely on the traditional doom side. Um, The first thing I noticed were the tempo changes. I feel like they're strategically placed within the songs. And the second thing I noticed were the the strong and soaring vocals. You know, um, I thought it was really interesting that they that they the last song on their album is a Reverend Bizarre cover, and I was not familiar with that song. So I went and I listened to, I went back and I listened to the Reverend Bizarre song, and then I went back and I listened to this. I could definitely see why they covered it because it's really, really in their wheelhouse. I think it's a bold choice to put that on their record. And it's the last song and it's the longest song by far. And I think that's a really bold choice. And I have a lot of respect for that. Yeah, it was interesting. I, I, I don't remember how High Warden got on my radar. Um, one of, one of the ways that any of these bands get on my radar, th- probably through the YouTube algorithm or going to the, uh, metal encyclopedia and looking at bands similar to, um, but anyway, Land of Stone got on my radar. Uh, it is their debut album as Heather mentioned, and it's only, I think like five tracks. Um, and it is very much, I felt the way I described it, I sort of felt like if you distilled down all the great components from like a good fantasy novel or a Dungeons and Dragons campaign, you would, you would get the doom that's coming forward. Um, and then I also looked up that Sirith Ungle was a, uh, Revan Brazar cover. I believe that was the cover. Um, so if you're into like the Witchfinder generals, um, and the, uh, um, why can't I remember this other band? Uh, Alter something. I'm blanking anyway. But that's the sort of doom you're going to get listening to High Warden. It's going to be that sort of straightforward, epic. Even though they're not, re- I would agree with you, they're not really, I wouldn't classify them as epic, but more just in terms of the subject matter. Um, and I did also notice the really cool uh, tempo changes that fit really well. Um, You know, most of the doom that I tend to listen to is either uh, on the quicker side uh, or on the slower side. Um, And and never the twain shall meet. 
but they do a really good job of mixing and matching. Um, it was also interesting. I think there are only two members of the band. Um, I think there's a drummer and then I think there's a bass and guitarist who also sings. So I don't know if when they play live, they have, um, like session musicians that are playing, but this album I think was put together by two people. The only other thing I thought of was uh, where they go, what the name meant, High Warden. Um, and I'm guessing that, uh, so a warden, you know, being someone who runs uh, a prison, for example. But I think uh, in the um, Lord of the Rings series, uh, Boromir, one of the characters, was a High Warden of, I believe, one of the towers. So. I'm guessing High Warden probably is a high-ranking official in some sort of fantasy tome. So, again, it really cool stuff. I'm excited to see where they go next. You know, what they do. They, they sort of opened, you know, it's very rare that I will hear something that isn't done that often. Um, like I, I really had the, the way that they constructed the songs with the tempo changes, I hadn't really heard that in Doom before. So anytime something like that shows up, I'm always like, Ooh, this is, let's see this, let's watch this seed germinate. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's, di it's different. And that's why, <clears throat> that's why I think their description of slow, heavy metal fits. Sure you know i think it fits more i think that description fits more than like a a a, a doom description because you know usually do, doom is a lot lots of times the same tempo throughout but <clears throat> since they're throwing in you know different tempos and cuz it it is slow but then but then there's these different tempos thrown in I definitely think the slow heavy metal what they call themselves is a better description i think yeah they're, they're doing some sophisticated and complex stuff yeah and, uh, yeah and I'm, I'm excited to see because i feel like this um was sort of like their demo yeah you know, debut, and i i'm eager to see what the first project after this will look like yeah so yeah yeah well that'll definitely be interesting <laughs> yeah it will so i would say check out labashita and high warden there is a, a lot of really cool stuff going on there um, yeah they're both innovating in genres that um like i i haven't really seen violin in punk rock before as much nor have i seen that many tempo changes in doom so yeah. I'm I'm glad that they're mining new territory. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, uh, it's always fun when uh when mu music is more of an art form and it kind of uh expands outside of any kind of so-called genre that we talk about. Yeah, well I you know I think people can tend to cling to the purity of something like yeah. I want, I want my doom to be traditional and slow. Yeah. But I appreciate when people do new things with the art form. Um, you know, because they they will be leading us to places we normally wouldn't go. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I feel like art, you know, um, art to me is something that pushes the envelope. Sure, it's provocative. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I plan on following Labashita and High Warden and seeing where they go with their next creations. Um, I'm guessing I probably won't be able to see them live at any point um, unless they decide to come to the U.S. But So if you're going to be on the East Coast or the Midwest, then let us know. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, keep making great music. Yeah. And I think... Uh, I think that's probably going to do it for episode 94. I think so. Yeah. Only six, only five more left. I before know. Before we hit a hundred. 
I know. Next up, it's, wild. I know. Next up, it's your choice. Yes, and i I changed <clears throat> I changed my my pick <laughs> for for next week. I put something different on That's the calendar, cool. and yeah, called an so, audible. I called an audible. I sure right. did. Well, I look forward to uh, seeing if I could read the Blitz or whatever the <laughs> whatever the you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, cool. Well, thank you so much, Heather. And uh, we will see all of you out there next week. Bye.